Hello and welcome back to PHP Security Pitfalls. In this video we'll dive into information leakage. Now information leakage happens when system information that is supposed to be for developers or administrators only is publicly available. Now this information can be anything ranging from your service PHP version to errors being echoed to the screen. As I said before you need to set up multiple layers of security measures. Now one of the first layers that needs to be set up is measures against information leakage. Information leakage is a high security risk because it tells attackers exactly where the weak spots are and it can help them plan their attack. It's like debugging messages for hackers really. Now you would think that developers knew better by now, but there are literally thousands of production servers out there that have error reporting set to on for instance, and even a quick Google search will direct you to hundreds of servers with dispo system information like this. Now there are a couple of causes to information leakage. The first one is accidental displaying of error messages like here. Now let's just have a quick look at a couple of ways to fix that. We'll just first create a new folder called info leakage. And then I'll just create a file called errors. Okay, now consider the following. Let's just try to include a non-existent file, say for instance foo.txt. Now if we run that using the default php.ini settings, a error message is displayed to the screen. It tells us we're using a function called include, exactly what directory we are in, and it tells us what our include path is. Now this is very useful information when you're debugging your application, but it's very useful information to a hacker if you're in a production environment, so you do not want to display this, ever. Well to avoid showing error messages like this, you have to disable error reporting for all components you're using. And the most foolproof way to configure PHP error settings is simply setting the proper values in php.ini. Now I'm in MAM Pro, so the easiest way for me to set php.ini is by doing file, edit template, php, php.ini. There we go. Okay, now the first setting I want to look for is display errors. And there it is. Let's just set this to off. And that means we will not ever display errors to the screen in this environment. Now the second setting I want to search for is display startup errors. And we don't want these to be displayed either, so we'll just set those to off as well. Now as for error reporting, I'm going to set that to E underscore all and E underscore deprecated, like so. Because I do want to catch those PHP errors. Then there's the HTML error setting, and we'll just set those to off by uncommenting this line here. And the last setting I'm looking for is log underscore errors. And you want to make sure to set this to on. So in retrospect, yes we are catching PHP errors, only we're not displaying them to the screen, instead we're writing them into an error log. So now I'll just save this, close it out and restart my server. And now when I return to my web page, no errors are being displayed whatsoever, but the errors that were previously dumped to the screen are now being saved inside of a log file. If you're on a production server, then these are the settings you will want to use. Okay, so I'll just reset these to the default values so we have something to work with. I'll just fast forward and see you in a minute. Okay, PHP's default settings have been restored and I've restarted my server. Let's go back to our code. Now, what if in production you cannot access php.ini or if you have different applications running on that server and you need to display errors by default or something? Well, there's basically two things you can do. You can create a htaccess file, like so, and you can use this to override the default ini settings. So what you would do is the following, php underscore flag, and that would be followed by a php.ini settings. So for instance, display underscore errors off. So I'll just copy that twice and do startup underscore errors and of course HTML errors. And then I'd make sure to set log underscore errors to on. And let's see if that does the trick. Just refresh the page and our errors are gone. This method is used a lot. I wouldn't recommend it. You see, the problem is you would probably be working with two or three HD access files. The one would be for development, right? So you'd have all these settings to on and maybe this to off. And you would need another one for production or for staging. 
Now there probably will come a day when you accidentally upload your development HD access file to your production environment and then you'd be displaying errors like there's no tomorrow. What's probably a better way is to set an environment variable and base your error reporting settings on that. And I think setting this variable dynamically is a good way to prevent yourself from accidentally uploading development files to your production server or vice versa. Now there are several values that we can set our environment variable upon. Like for instance, we could have a look at the path for our current file. And that path will most likely be different for development and for production. Or we could use our computer name such as Laravel does. But for now, I think path would do. Okay, so what we're gonna do is define a variable called path. And we'll just set that to the directory name for the file we are currently using, like so. And now we could do a switch statement on that path. So we'll do switch path. Now in our case, the path to the current file is, and I'm just gonna paste that in, applications, map, etc. So now we'll create a variable called env and set it to development. Now here, I could include some logic to detect other servers, but we could also set a default setting. And let's just do that right here and set it to production. So if we can't match any server, we'll always say, Right, we're in production. And then we could maybe define a constant so that this constant is available throughout the entire application. So we'll just set that to C underscore environment and the value will be equal to the variable env. Tell you what, let's just create a file called functions and just clip this code and copy it right there. And now all we need to do here is require the file functions.php. Now, why on earth would we want to have a environment constant anyway? Well, for instance, we can use it to set our error reporting settings. So let's just do a switch on environment and just say that if it's equal to development, then we'll set error reporting to minus one because we want every error to be reported. And then the default value will be error reporting zero, which is no error reporting whatsoever. And let's just comment this detect environment and here we will be set error reporting, like so. So I'll just save this, we'll go back to our web page, and here is our error reporting set to minus one. And if I set this to zero for this environment, and it's all gone. Okay, now we can set this back to minus one. Now a second source of information leakage is over specific feedback. Say for instance, we have a login form, and I try and log in a user with an email of yoast at foo.com. If a user with this email address does not exist, we could do something like echo, we could not find their user. Now think about it, what are we actually telling an attacker here? We are telling him there is no user with an email of yoast at foo.com. So he can just keep on trying, you know, trying different email addresses one at a time, and maybe admin and admin.com will not trigger this error anymore. Now we have told a possible attacker that admin at admin.com is indeed a valid email address. It is indeed a user inside of our database. This is not good, people. So instead of saying we could not find the user, we could instead echo an error like this combination of email and password doesn't exist. Now you are saying what's wrong. You've got a wrong combination. Only you're not saying if the actual user exists. So this is much more generic. Now another very common mistake is left in debugging statements. Now this could either be in HTML, but it could also be PHP debugging such like a forgotten var dump statement. It's very easy to overlook these kind of dump statements, especially if you, for instance, have them inside of script tags. Anyway, so what's a good fix for this? Well, there are several fixes, of course, but one of those would be to create a new function. For instance, a function called dump, and let's just say we pass a message to that. Now I can take this switch statement and just copy it in here. And we'll say that if we're in development, then we'll take the message and we'll just var dump it. Like so. And by default, so if we're in production, then we'll just do nothing at all. Let's just create an array here. It'll just be an empty array, it doesn't really matter. Now here we could say dump, dump that array to the screen. Inside of our browser, we'll have this array only if we're in production nothing will be dumped at all. So should you ever forget to remove one of those dump statements, which of course you shouldn't, but then no harm will be done. 
Let's just add a little comment to that. Environment specific debugging. Now the last example of information leakage that I want to leave you with is server headers. If I view the response headers of this web page here, I can see the following. In the Apache server header, a lot of details about the server and its uh, configuration are being displayed. And in the PHP header X powered by, you can see which version of PHP we're running. Now it would be nice if we could hide some of these configuration values. Not because hiding them would prevent us from attacks, but because not hiding them would make it, well, really, really, really very easy for hackers. So for that, we'll just have to dive into configuration again. First of all, what we're going to be doing is uh, edit the httpd.com file for Apache, right like this. Now what we need to do is look for server tokens. Now here's the server tokens variable. As you can see, it's been commented out. Now we can choose from a couple of values. Full means we'll be displaying all details. And prod will means we'll display the product only, which is the least details. Now, oddly enough, if it's commented out or just not set, then Apache will display full mode. Now, we don't want that, so we'll just uncomment this and make sure we'll set it to prod. The next setting we'll be looking for is server signature, and that needs to be set to off, which it is. So we'll just save that, and then we'll just open up php.ini, like this, and look for expose underscore php which is set to on now, and we'll just set that to off. And this regulates the X powered by value. So we'll just close that out and restart the server. Okay, now let's just reload the web page and display response headers again. And as you can see, server just says Apache and X powered by has been deleted completely. And that's all for information leakage. Safe coding, and I'll see you in the next video.